of the second speaker or second personality who had a great impact on my life and that was Dr. Israr Ahmed Dr. Israr Ahmed may Allah grant him Jannah he was one of the best Urdu speaking orators in the world that I know of so I traveled all the way to Pakistan in 1991 to meet Dr. Isra Ahmed. He was a medical doctor. He wasn't trained in any Islamic Institute or Islamic University. He was a medical doctor inspired by Maududi, Jamaat Islami, went to Tabli Jamaat and started his own organization, Tanjimul Islam. I went to Lahore to meet him. And I was shocked at his simplicity. The command that he has over the Quran. He also speaks in English but mainly in Urdu. And I was impressed by it. So I purchased all his video cassettes and added to the video cassette library. And to cut the story short, I learned many things from him. I'll just mention two important things I learned. Number one, he told me that I told about my background, I'm a medical doctor, I've just passed. And in 1991, I finished my medical studies and I was doing my internship when we started the organization. In 1991, in 1990, I finished my medical studies. For one year, there was internship. And during internship, I had more time, so we started the organization. So I told him, I've just finished my medical studies. I would like to, do, I would like to become a surgeon, do my MS, and I'm interested in Dawa. So he told me, son, you have to choose between the two. Either you choose your medical practice or dawah. I being a medical doctor, I practiced for seven years and tried to do both. I could not. If you want to specialize, choose between the two, one thing. Then after his guidance, I chose to become a dawah. The second thing I learned from him was, he told me that if you want to become a Dai, see to it that you make your personal needs the minimum. I said, why? He said, if you make your personal need the minimum with the least amount of monthly requirement, you can speak the truth more easily. You won't have to depend on anyone. You won't have to depend on please someone who's paying your salary see to it that your needs are the least and I saw that he had such a big institution but what a simple man Dr. Israr Ahmed May Allah grant him Jannah and this thing that not to spend excessively was one of the cornerstone of my success Just in case I forget, towards then I may tell you. But today, I require only 2,000 ringgit a month for me and my wife to survive. Only 2,000 ringgit. Very comfortably. Very comfortably. Not for my DAO activity. DAO activity, though I have travel, fly, I pay my own money, that's different. That may be large amount. But for my personal needs, 2,000 ringgit is sufficient. In Bombay, it was 40,000 rupees. Here is 2,000 ringgit sufficient. Inshallah, time permits, I'll come to it later on. So these two things I learned from Sheikh Ahmed Dida. And when I came back, I told my parents. Initially, when we started the organization, Islam Research Foundation, I told my parents, I will only be giving two hours a week. Because once I finish my internship, when I join MS surgery, I have to be the 24 by 6 or 6 and a half. Maybe I get half a day in a week free. So I spend some time with my family and two hours in this organization. But then I decided I will not do my post graduation. I told my parents, I want to give two hours a day for dawah and the balance time for my medical practice. My father had a roaring practice. My elder brother, Dr. Muhammad Naik also was a doctor. And 
my brother he was a very good orator so when Sheikh Ahmed Didat came he was the MC because he was the secretary general of his medical college very good orator not an Islamic speaker but a general orator so that's how Sheikh Didat was impressed so I told my parents two hours dawa remaining medical practice after a couple of months I said 50% dawa 50% medical practice they said no problem then I said two hours medical practice remaining dawa they said no problem then after maybe a year or so I said full-time dawa they said no problem 